Hi, welcome. Uh, you're getting to the end of your journey in this course and we're going to conclude the class with the final few, few lessons being centered around how to summarize how to roll up data within a MySQL query. You'll also hear this referred to as data aggregation. This is a subject that not everyone that has to work with data and querying a database necessarily has to do, but it's a good subject that I think everyone has a basic understanding of. It's a very important subject in learning MySQL. Most warehouses, data warehouses, data marts, uh, a great deal of what they're all about is being able to take data and roll it up, being able to aggregate it, being able to summarize it to provide reports on, on various types of things. There's a lot of uses for being able to summarize and roll up data. For example, quarterly, monthly, end of year financial statements. That's what they're going to do. They're going to go into the various data tables and they're going to roll up the data. In retail, point-of-sale systems. We're going to invariably have queries that are written against point-of-sale systems that give us daily sales. can even break those sales down in by the hour to show peak times that we're busy. So we can use that information to determine things like scheduling. They're used to roll up data in inventory control systems. They're used some data summarization, data roll up, can be used for for reordering data, just a whole use of uses. Not sure that was said quite right, but there's just a, a wealth of uses for being able to roll up and summarize data. So even if that's something that you're not going to be able to do, having a good foundation for it or just some exposure to it, I think is a good idea. Now let's start out with first a, a simple query where we're not doing that so you can kind of look at the raw data set. So in this query I'm returning back the, the year ID, the team ID, the player ID, and the wins and losses from the, the pitching, the BB pitching table in the train warehouse. And you can see our record set coming back. And we're doing that for the year 1961. But suppose someone came along and said, you know, what, what we really like to see is the win-loss record for year 1961, not by player, but by the team. So, so could, you, could you write us a query that gives us the win-loss record by team? Well, as, as we look at this data here, this is how it naturally occurs in this table. So for us to be able to roll up that data by team, what we have to do is summarize the data or do data aggregation to be able to get that the information that someone's asking for. So let's let's take a step over into our next query, group 1a.sql. And if we look at the result set, we see that's exactly what we're doing. We're rolling up the data wins and losses by the team ID. So let's take a look at the syntax for the query, what we've done, and, and talk about that a little bit. So as you'll see up in the select statement, what I've got going is a sum function on the W column or the wins column, and a sum function on the L or the losses column. And that's allowing us to summarize the data. But what are we summarizing it on? There's a lot of different columns that we can summarize the data against. Well, in this case, our group by statement is going to define how we're summarizing the data. So again, the group by column establishes how we're going to summarize our data. And in this case, we're summarizing it based off of the team ID column. And so that's allowing this function up here, it's giving it the context to apply the sum function against 
the W column and the sum function against the loss column in context to the team ID. So if we if we go back to our original record set, what's happening is we're mathematically adding up all of the wins in the wins column and all of the losses in the loss column by the team ID. But we could summarize data on a number of different dimensions, if you will. We could, someone could come along and say, I'd like to see all of the wins and losses, the total wins and losses that Team ID BAL or Baltimore has had from the years 1960 to 1969. So what were, what were their win and losses for that decade? And to do that, we'd have to pick, we'd have to, we'd actually have to select a different group by column. To do something like that, we'd have to select the year ID column instead of the group by column. And so let's quickly change our query and, and, and make that happen. So I'm going to change this to the year ID. And let's just run our query again and see what happens to the results set. Ah, interesting. What happened here? Well, we just rolled up our data for all the wins and all of the losses for all of the teams for year 1961. But what we want to do is we want to see the wins losses for all of the teams from 1961 through 1969. So how would we go about doing that? Well, what we can do is we can change our row restriction in our WHERE statement to say where the year ID is equal to 1961. And of course, this is all ground that you've covered in previous lessons. And where the year ID is less than 1970. Now, if we run this, you'll see we're getting closer to what we want but not quite. So we're, we're still getting the total for each year, but we want to see a, the wins and losses by team for each year. And so what we would do is come along to our group by clause, and we would add in team ID. And now if we run this, you're going to see the wins and losses, and again, ordered by the sum of the wins. So we're going to, in descending order, so we're going to see the team with the most wins. And we'll see in 1961 that New York won 109, lost 53. 1969, the Orioles, 109 wins, 53 losses. And, and, and down the list we go. Now, the next question that you may be asking is, can I join tables on data that I summarize because we've just gone through a series of lessons where we've joined table together and the answer to that is is yes let's transition over to group 1 BSQL and if you see we have essentially the same query as the previous one that we initially started with and the only difference is is we're returning the team name back. So what we've done here is we've done a join on the teams table, joining it to the BB pitching table where the team ID is equal to the team ID so that we can return back the full team name. Also call your attention to the fact that we're still grouping by the team ID. So in other words, we no longer have the group or the team ID up in the select statement. So in this case it's not really a requirement to have it there. Now typically in your group by statement unless you're resolving a foreign key to get maybe a long name or something more descriptive you're, you're typically going to include your group by column up in your select statement. So to quickly recap what we've, what we've covered so far is I've shown you how to use an aggregation function 
in this case the sum function which is just a mathematical function that's going to count that's going to produce basically a sum by counting rows in a particular column for us based on some group by function that we're going to ask for and what you've also been exposed to is the fact that our group by function is not just limited to a single column in this case we're grouping by the year as the primary group and the team ID is the secondary group so we can get a list of wins and losses by team ID over multiple years. So this is all I have for this lesson. In the next lesson we're going to start to cover of some more of these aggregate functions. So I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.